ליאת דרור, ניר בן גל, שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. I want to thank you very much for inviting us here to Mitzpe Ramon. And even more so to thank you for a wonderful performance yesterday. Your new work, Up Chi, Down Chi. In a very special place, the Ramon crater. It was definitely worthwhile driving 200 kilometers, and if I may say so, it was definitely worthwhile waiting for your new work. Until 10 years ago, if I'm not wrong, every serious dance lover, both in Israel and all around the world couldn't speak or begin to speak about Israeli modern dance without mentioning you. Thanks to your extensive performances, both in Israel, but especially all over the world, your new uh, dance language that you have created so talentedly. I believe that uh, you were uh, one of the leaders of Israeli modern dance, but all of a sudden, about 10 years ago, uh, you disappeared, and we came here to find out. So what's the story? <laughs> um, we want to look for a new way. We, when the children began to come, um, we felt something is not okay with the art world and with uh, to be all the day with in the studio. Something was wrong in our life, and I think not just in our life; it's in the Western life sometimes. And we went to the desert to look for a new option. And so art can be not painful. But heart can also heal. Usually it's separate. If you are dealing with art, you are artist and you are uh, living this way of life. And if you are healing, you are out of the stage. And we didn't know what will come. And we need to take time out from the stage to see what it's real life. How, what it's uh, life meaning. So we came to the desert, to Mitzpah Ramon, and we built Anga Adama. It's, it was a... Adama, forgive me for interrupting, means earth or soil. Yes, yeah. It was nothing here. It was uh, nothing at all in this area. It was a room, room you say, yeah? A factory, very old, and... <coughs> I don't know why we took it. I didn't believe so much. No, we took it. And um, we start, I think we thought maybe if we will heal this place, the ground, we will heal ourselves. Wow, impressive. <laughs> I don't know why. Sounds, sounds like a pio being a pioneer, following uh, in the footsteps of David Ben-Gurion. Who also did a similar journey, maybe not for the same reasons, but he went not far away from here. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nir can continue. <laughs> <laughs> Nir, so we hear from uh, Liat that you are responsible for building all this. Quite an achievement. And if I may say so, in addition for being a wonderful choreographer, you also make one of the best hummus I have tasted. <laughs> so multi-talented. <laughs> I, I think that uh, the, the being on stage and the system of, of performing, going to festivals all around the world, uh, at a certain point I felt it's quite limited and I'm, 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 uh, I felt like enough, I can't do it anymore. Not that it's bad or something, just for me I felt like I want 
to know more about myself. And I felt that when you, when you do choreography, you actually build. You build dance or you build movement or you connect movement and you connect people. And this ability to, to make choreography and to build, you can actually build whatever you like. You can build your business, you can build your relationship, you can build your uh, space in the, in the desert. And, and I feel that the desert, which is an empty space and we have a lot of nothing here, actually give us the opportunity to build our choreography that is not only on this one hour on stage. Actually, when you came here, you did a workshop, you eat a dinner, you see the performance, you have a dance, you slept here, you come the other morning, you so it's, it, you, you, I feel like I, I'm, I'm doing a choreography for, you know, three days for, for many people. I feel the And same, by the way. Yeah, so it's, it's more complicated in the way, it's more uh, challenged. And, and it took time to, to, to do it far away from, from what we call the center. I believe here in the desert is the center and the other places are peripheria, but uh, wherever you are, it's a center, you know? So I think it's, it was a, a period that we took time to build, to build something which doesn't have a system uh, before and we had to build this system. And... Uh, We did not disappear. <laughs> We just uh, went to another direction to learn something. I think now is a, is a good time to come back, you know, if, if you look at it from the side of disappearing, because our knowledge is already... Um, how do you say it, you know? We are still learning. I don't feel like I know anything, but... I, c I can I can talk about this knowledge. It took it 12 took, years, but it took you uh, quite a while before you felt that now it's the right time to share it yeah. with the world. Yeah. Lucky us. Yeah. Lucky us. And lucky us. May I ask, talking about your new work, Up Chi Down Chi, and I know that uh, quite soon. You will be taking it abroad, if I'm not wrong, to Czechia. To Prague, yes. To Prague. Uh, can you tell us a bit about this work? How was it conceived? What does it mean? Because when I hear Apchi, the immediate, uh, the immediate urge is to say Gesundheit. But it's not that. It has something to do with Chinese, right? It also is that, to sneeze. Okay. And because uh, the chi is in the center of the stomach and usually when you are sneezing it's mean in the Chinese uh, like uh, the chi don't want to be in his place it's coming up and you don't have um, you can't control it and um, it's talking about the option where is the center and how can we go up and we can go down when the center is in the center of the body. When we are losing the center, actually we can't go up. When we are going up, we are flying and we don't have connection to the ground. And when we are going down, we are crashing. And um, everyone feels it, that uh, sometimes he's doing so much things and then suddenly he can't do anything anymore. He becoming a sick. Uh, a lot of time the sickness is the thing that stop us. That uh, make uh, like, okay, we can't anymore. We have to take some days, we have to take our own time. And uh, the option to stop before the heal, to, to, it's like to agree to be uh, with the sickness all the time. So it won't come into the body. And uh, I, it's also a play with the words, uh, because we say apchi in Ipu. We don't say sneezing. And uh, we say, no, when the, uh, the chi is going up, we have to take it back. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. I, I think also it's uh, something about the stage, 
we were talking about choreography, from my opinion, which doesn't mean anything when you see the performance, you know, it's just my opinion. Um, on stage everybody is very beautiful and doing this movement and then immediately when they go down the stage, you know, they become happy. And there are some movement that you don't do on stage, but you definitely do it uh, outside the stage. And this separation is like uh, uh, when you are sick and when you are uh, healthy. feeling good, healthy. healthy. So I feel it's the same, but from another point of view. And there is something in the work that we do the, the work on stage and everybody is very beautiful with the dresses and everything. But then we took the, the movement that you don't do on stage, you do backstage, and we put them on stage, and you see that they are still beautiful and amazing. And so it's for me, it says that you, you can be a, a whole person only if you are sick and healthy, not only when you are healthy. And, and you, you have to, to have everything inside you. So the backstage and the front of the stage should be one, and both of them has the beauty or the whatever is there, you know. It's a very holistic yeah. view and a very holistic approach to life. Basically what you are saying, if I understood both of you correctly, is that the lines between public and personal or healthy and mm -hmm. sick are quite artificial. Yeah. yeah. And actually if you have ability, you should be always both ways and, and a know, you know, have, have the knowledge. Amazing. It's not only a new work, it's not only a new day, a dance, it's a new philosophy. <laughs> and we have, we have to thank the philosophy. desert. We have to thank the desert. Yeah, you have to thank the desert and Ben Gurion, of course. And Ben Gurion. <laughs> uh, I know that in addition uh, for working and uh, Living here, you also teach. And despite of what you said, Nir, forgive me for saying so, uh, this is still part of the periphery for the majority of the people of Israel. Which means that the fact that you came all over here from the busy, central, industrious life of Israel, you made it all the way to the periphery and you are now sharing your art with people who are living here in the area. This is indeed a, a mission, a very important mission. <laughs> How do you see teaching? Um. I, will, I start to teach before I start to dance on stage or anything else. I think my teacher didn't thought that I can go on stage, so she said, have a job. And uh, I think a lot of time, not only in dance, people don't treat teaching in the right place, in the right way. Um, I, I think to teach it's very important for me. Because when I'm teaching, I'm learning, um, and th this is the way we de develop, the develop the place, develop the way of thinking. You call it philosophy, but it's uh, it's not philosophy. It's very practical sometimes. Uh, how to make the philosophy practical, practical. philosophy? Yeah, <laughs> I like it. And. Uh, <laughs> It's also something, you know, we start to teach, it was three students, yeah, because in Tel Aviv we had a lot of students. And then when we start, it was three girls, and then come a little bit of boys, and it was so um, slowly. We had to have so much patience uh, to believe that they will come. And the uh, school is growing every year it's really growing and in the teaching the way that uh, we oh, uh, I don't know how to say it but uh, the way that uh, school is going on this is the actually building if we talk about building this is what build the place 
the how the school now is going this is what make yesterday the performing and everything and um, this is giving like the sense of this place now and uh, I don't know if it's a mission but uh, I, I never thought like that but uh, I think people don't really learn they study, they have homework, they have a job I don't think people really learn Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, to learn, really to learn something, not uh, in your head, not uh, to know more things about the world, but actually to be able to learn. And uh, it's, not easy, it's not so easy to, to teach and to make people learn. I don't know if I answer your question. I think you did. <laughs> I think you did, and I I'm think, grateful. I think the, the mission is, is, is for me, because um, actually, you know, when you want to learn something new that you don't know, there is this period of time that you are a little bit stupid because you don't know. And all of us know, you know, and we feel like, okay, I'm a grown man, I have my... I know what what does it mean I have to learn something new and and the only place I, I found that I can really learn is when I'm teaching so actually I'm teaching what I don't know and it's a different kind of teaching when I was a student you know the teacher just told me to let to right two steps to the right two step to the left do more higher bigger and and uh, and actually I feel that this school is uh, the teaching the learning is different is is um, is about what you don't know, and it's very built in tsai. How do you say built in tsai? Direct, very direct. Uh, like you have to uh, to give self. Example. No mediators. Yeah, and 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 the teacher is. I f I think it's very important that the teacher will not know. You know, he has to. To ask questions and he has to be able to get answer that sometimes he doesn't like when I teach choreography for example sometimes people bring solution that I don't like or I would not bring this solution and that's how you learn because people bring new things and sometimes you feel like it's against you but it's not it's just another option so I think when when you I mean, you're still the teacher, you have to, to tell the students what to do, they can't do whatever they want. But, it's at, not but at the same time, forgive me for interrupting, if I get you right, you are both a teacher and at the same time a student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A very... Young student. A very humble and uh, refreshing approach, if I may say so. Another philosophy. <laughs> yeah. And we have to thank the <laughs> desert again. <laughs> May I desert, ask you? Desert Sorry. from the, the the Bible, you know, from the history of Israel, was a place for people. David, the King David, was running to the desert every time he needed time for himself, and so every prophet, you know, came or ran to the desert for the time he needed to know something. To so think, to think, to, to reflect, think and to, to reflect, think. and to think. Right. Yeah. So I, I, we are not doing anything that nobody did before us. You know, it's not a new, uh, but. I think it's, uh, and it's good for us, it doesn't mean that uh, you have to go to the desert tomorrow. <laughs> Although I was considering it quite seriously, I may say, <laughs> if I may say so. May I ask about uh, up uh, Chi, down Chi? I have noticed, and it is very uh, clear when you are watching the, the show, that there is an extensive uh, role for the Chilean composer. He speaks quite a lot about himself, about his work. How did you, how did you find him? And why Chilean? <laughs> we found it because my, our son, uh, our oldest son, is uh, not, he's dancing and he's doing acrobatic and he always look for uh, music for his own things. And he gave us, I think, like a present, and we really uh, appreciated it. He gave us the disc of this uh, uh, musician, of Nicholas Jar, and he said, this is the music for your new production. Amazing. Which, yeah. 
It's a small it world. Was like amazing. Yeah. Amazing yeah. is the world. Yeah. yeah. I think it's not a kind of music that you find in a record shop or you don't hear it in the radio or it's not inside MTV the music. yeah and the internet and things like that and the young people more know how to reach the things and they don't know because I never heard it uh, not from my, my son I, I never heard it still nowhere and then uh, I really I think he bless us yeah <laughs> and what amazing about the music that I think he's talking the same language we talk on stage because he takes sounds and he put them together and it doesn't take always the beautiful sound like when you go to a concert It's a beautiful sound of a piano or whatever. And here it just takes sound of children and rain and, and wind and, and people talking in different language. And it just put them together and this, this putting them together, connect them, make it music and very harmonical, although it's not harmonical at, at mm -hmm. all. So I think the, the music is really supporting our piece. We, we can talk with the music. It's not like we just put music in. Right, right. What can we wish uh, Liate Dror and the Nir Bengal Dance Company when it comes to the present, to the future? <laughs> the best. <laughs> yeah. This, is, auto this is automatic. <laughs> I, I wish to myself that I, have, I will have the strength to, to, to continue You know learning and searching and not losing it and um, I think it's it's the, it's the year it's the time now for us to to start traveling again in the world and not just bringing people to the desert we did it for 12 years very successfully and so I wish for uh, for us and for the company and for the upchi downchi to travel a lot outside of Israel And we, of course, join this wish of yours and would like to wish you all the best, lots of success. Liat, Nir, Todaraba. Todaraba, thank you.